Hey, welcome back to another Black City Coffee vlog. In this video, we're gonna talk about if I were to go back in time, how I would choose an espresso machine now. So a longtime fan of the channel, Hillary asked me, hey, do you know of like an affordable yet also very professional um, at-home espresso maker looking to buy one? Thank you for your question. Um, that's gonna be really hard for me to answer and I, I've been taking some time to think about how I was gonna answer that because it's not like I have all the experience of using all these other machines and comparing them one by one and this is usually how I handle a review video on my channel. It's like, well, this is my machine or this is my tool or whatever. This is how I use it um, and I thought, Again, to put another spin on that, not to just review this machine, because there's a ton of videos on that. If you just YouTube it, and they do so much better job of re reviewing all the features of this thing. I'll get into it, how I use it and everything, but I think it's important for me to uh, add something more to the conversation, which would be like how if because this was a gift for me, and um, this was before I didn't know anything about everything that I know now, which is still just a smidge on the scale of coffee knowledge. Um, you know, if I had my choice, like this was a gift, like I said, if I had my choice of what I would choose today, um, I'm still not even, <laughs> I, I'm, I'm not sure about the brand exactly, and I'm still not, not really sure about the machine. I mean, that would require like more than a couple of days for me to choose. I'm, I sort of get kind of in the weeds about things and, and then I would make a decision. So I don't have that answer for you here on exactly what I would get. But I do know that knowing what I know now and uh, just on the path that I'm, I'm in with coffee now and, and trying to make roast for specific, specifically espresso. Um, I would definitely get a machine that just made espresso. Um, it just had one steaming wand. Like I don't need like three different wands and things like that. I know that for sure. I know I would not be getting a, um, a grinder attached to it. I would probably get a separate high-end grinder, right? Um, that I could really dial in things and, um, and really just uh, get fine-tuned fine -tuned with everything and this machine does allow you to do that for sure like if I can choose not to use this but between this grinder and this grinder it, it's really not that big of a difference you know in terms of uh, uh, grind quality and I think this one is even better for espre uh, espresso uh, specifically just because it's made to grind things very finely, right? So it's attached to the thing. And sometimes when things are attached or kit models and things like that, they're not the best. And that is true, but I think in comparison to my Capresso, my Capresso is a 150, maybe $200 retail value uh, grinder. Um, and you all know, like there's $1,500 $2,000 grinders end upwards of, you know, in terms of getting a really, really good grinder, right? Um, and that's on my list. It's on the list of things to get for sure, is to get a, um, maybe a Malkonig or, I don't know how you say that, but the Malkonig is on my mind right now. Definitely wanna get one of those. And I don't drink a lot of espresso. I think I normally drink a black coffee once a day um, and my genuine focus, yes, is on the experience of coffee and every now and again, um, uh, like in the fall time, I, I like to enjoy an espresso uh, or I like to enjoy um, a latte or something or a cappuccino or something like that. But most of the time, personally, in my house, it's a black cup of coffee. Um, that's mostly what I'm drinking. So for me, like, this is fine. But if I had my choice and, um, and I was really doing testing and I was really trying to make um, blends or express, espresso blends, espresso roasts for you know, a particular type of customer, I would, I would like to really, really dial it in for them, for them. And I just like nerding out and um, you know, seeing how much I can learn and, and upgrade my skills. I just see this as a skill set in terms of uh, coffee. This machine, like it's a semi-automatic, right? So if you go and look at espresso machines, you have a fully automatic, semi-automatic, and then there's there's the basically like a, um, you know, like the flare. You know, you just press that thing. <laughs> uh, I guess that's called manual. I don't know. 
Um, but anyway, so this is, this is I think it's labeled, um, if you were to look under in under category, this semi-automatic. So it kind of can do things, right? So you can actually program it. There's a program button here. I never use it. Um, they have baskets here that are pressurized. So this, for example, the dual wall, uh, it only has, it's like a faux uh, porta uh, filter, a basket. There's only one hole here. So it kind of like gives you a little bit of um, a handicap, I guess, in terms of skills and tamping and, and dosing and all that stuff. So it, it makes uh, your job easier. You're, you're trying to kind of dial in the rows. Instead of doing everything manually, say, with the standard, the standard pore filter, right? Like this is a single, um, like a single dose. The double dose, oh yeah, the doubles here. So um, they do give you that option, right? So if you're um, somebody who loves espresso and loves espresso drinks um, um, and you're kind of like decent at things, um, or maybe you're terrible at uh, tamping and all that stuff and dialing in and trying to find the right grind size and everything. You do have that option to put these on um, and a sort of just handicap. <laughs> Helps you out, you know. You know, if I can make an analogy with photography. With photography, you can shoot on automatic, right? Or program or whatever the heck. Or you can put it on manual, right? So I shoot on manual. So this machine allows you to shoot on manual, basically, right? So you can dial things in. And I think as, as somebody who's not um, a professional barista or anything like that, but wants to dive into that world, I think this is a great machine. And it's under $1,000, right? So you know, you know the La Morascos go to like 10 grand and up, right? Like if, so um, I think it's a pretty good machine and it still allows you to uh, dive into the skills of, of making good espresso at home, at home. You're not really gonna get cafe quality espresso at home because you're most likely you know not going to have those ten thousand thousand dollar machines that are able to generate this much pressure blah, 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 all this stuff right so i'm not going to get into the weeds of that but at home you know it's not really about that it's just it's about being at home and enjoying things and and doing it for yourself um and not spending an arm and a leg um, and another arm and a leg, and then you have no more arms and legs, and then you only have an espresso machine. <laughs> so that's not good, right? So in terms of affordability, like $600 would, somebody would still call that steep. Like when I received this gift, I said, I said to my husband, I said, wow, that's expensive, but that's how, that's how the husband rolls. <laughs> So he was like, well, yeah, you know, it must be really good because it's expensive. And I was like, oh, yeah, it must be. Um, but little did you know, like all things, you know, you still have to, you still have to be a, a good user, a good user for the, for the tool that you have, for your expensive little tool. Um, but yeah, I love it. I stand by it. Um, I clean it all the time. I'm always trying to finagle with it. I have not mastered it. I have not mastered it. It's probably been like five years or something like that. Um, but that's part of the fun. Just like roasting, just like all kinds of coffee, it, the journey is endless and that's why it's so fun, right? But yeah, I love it. If I'm, if I'm thinking about, like I say, like if I'm thinking about getting a new espresso and I'm like, oh, we're, we have this espresso wing in the, in the company and we're just doing espresso in this wing, right? Like this project espresso. Then of course I'd be trying to buy something probably around $1,500, something like that, and probably get a similarly equivalent uh, $1,500 grinder, something like that. I've seen those price ranges and I'm like, that's doable. I think that would be doable for a business, you know, a business that um, is, in, is in the business of making espresso, right? Or has a, has a love for espresso. That's what I would do. I don't know the brand. I'd, it'd probably be like, um, maybe like the, not the new fandangled, like fully automatic or even the semi-automatic Gaja, Gaja, that brand. I like that brand a lot. There's another, I wouldn't get the DeLonghi's. I wouldn't get any of those, or I wouldn't get any of the, like this brand here, Capresso. It's still low end, you know? Um, I would kind of step it up into entry level high end. I think that's what I would do um, if I had uh, the choice and, and um, I guess the funds. <laughs> I always have the funds, but it's like, do I want to do that? Do I want to 
again, spend an arm and a leg and not have an arm and a leg for, you know, Christmas time or something like that. But that's, that's definitely what I would do if I had the means of doing it, right? Like if I didn't have any um, limitations to me. So that's what I would do, okay? So for your case, in your case, you know, trying to find something very good, but still at home, still affordable, that's a very, in coffee, that's a very like, woo, that, that word's not very clear, right? So I would kind of define, I would ask you, what do you mean by affordable? Under $1,000, I'd say is affordable in terms of uh, espresso machines. Um, those Mr. Coffee ones, you're not gonna get any good pressure out of that. Um, I think you're looking for at least 15 bars of pressure. Please correct me in the comments, I forget. When I, was, um, when I first got this, I started to research all about it. Um, and I was like checking off all the boxes of how, how much pressure, um, how much maintenance, um, what was the grinder, you know, what, what's in here, what's under the hood here, um, how, how easy is it to dial in, things like that, right? Um, but there's so many different factors like is your coffee fresh, what kind of coffee are you putting in there, all that kind of stuff. Um, but... You know, for me, when I was when I was researching, I was just like impressed. I was impressed. I was impressed that this Breville that makes it does make high end things, um, but I didn't really expect it to be kind of at that level when I was researching it, um, which was a nice surprise, right? For six hundred dollars, and when I was um, doing my little research fiending, I was like, oh, this is actually pretty good. It's a pretty good deal for, for what I get. You know, I, I get to go, I get to shoot in manual, right? I get to do things, I get to dial it in. And if I'm being lazy about it, if I'm, if I don't have time for anybody to have time for that, then I can just switch over to the, the pressurized, um, baskets if I really wanted to. But then my ego is always like, oh, you can't do it, can you? <laughs> but develop your skills. So, um, and it comes with this tamp too, right? So it's like, it's complete. You know, it's not pretty. I mean, it's basic, right? It's basic. I just kind of, I like that it was red before, like red was my favorite color before, and now it's black, 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 black. That would be how I would kind of approach it today. Um, and you know me, kind of a little all over the place, scatterbrain about it, but in the end, um, I'm, you know, I'm focused on my goals. So I would say to you, you know, when you're shopping for an espresso machine, what's your goals, as always, with anything? What's your goals? Um, focus on your goals and in the big picture you're not going to get the perfect machine okay if you're spending under a thousand dollars accept that um, and uh, say well what are my big picture goals and does it do the big picture goals like shooting manual right like can I dial it in um, does it seem good milk right like if you drink a lot of lattes and things like that um, does it does it make you happy too to see it you know sitting there are you motivated to go and do it Right, like if you're new, um, this is a big thing for me, aesthetics. It's like I told you guys before, design, aesthetics. If it doesn't look good, I'm kind of not too motivated to go and do the thing. <laughs> so uh, that's just how I am. Um, and I kind of like that because it promotes me to always keep my space clean because I can be a very messy person. Um, you know, make good designs, you know, um, that way I could share it with others too, because the design or the care or the organization is there, right? So, um, take that into consideration too, when you're shopping for your machine. Do you like how it looks? Some, some machines look whack, <laughs> right? I mean, to me. So find something that looks dope on your, in your kitchen or on your countertop or wherever the heck you're in your coffee espresso wing of your business, right? Like make it look cool. Um, vis a vis, I finally, you know, organized all my stuff here. And now, to me, like, because it was getting super cluttered, I'd be like, God, I don't want to do that. And now it's all very organized. And then I'm like, I love, I love to step up to the plate, so to speak, right? Step up to the plate. We got all the things. What you want? What you want? We got all the things. So, unfortunately, I've been dealing with a little bit of stomach issues. And I, this is my last announcement. Um, oh, I do have another announcement actually. Stomach issues, I haven't had coffee for, I don't know, six days maybe? It's been a struggle. <laughs> um, I found out I'm very much addicted to 
uh, caffeine and coffee. I've been very fatigued. I'm bringing it right now for the video. I've uh, been very fatigued, been in a lot of pain, a lot of headaches, going through a lot of the withdrawals of uh, coffee withdrawal, um, but it's necessary. And <laughs> the mantra that I would say to myself is, I am willing to make the changes to make my body healthy. Um, and, and if that means giving up coffee, one of my most favorite things in the world, um, I'm willing to do that. But on the plus side, um, my mom always wanted me to roast decaf, so I finally went shopping for decaf, and that will be something for me to explore as well, um, me drinking decaf when... Hopefully this is not a, a regular occurrence. I have to find out what is the root of this cause of this um, ailment, but this dis-ease. But um, I think decaf is in my future and uh, I'm excited and I'm okay about that. And I'm excited to see where that goes in terms of roasting, like I've mentioned before. I'm excited, I've always been excited to roast decaf and I, I suspect it will be somewhat like naturals. So when that happens, I'll share that with you. Lastly, all right, your samples came back. Again, I'm sorry. <laughs> they told me one ounce, one ounce for one stamp. And I'm like, dope, let me do it again. What do you know? Came back. <sighs> I want to get it to you guys. I want to get it to you. It's not me. It's the postal system that, that says, hey, you can, you can ship stuff for a stamp for one ounce and that's okay. And then they say, no, it's not. So what I'm going to do is um, I'm getting them back to me. I'm having them ship back to me. Um, and then I'm going to add another stamp on there. And I think we should be cool. <laughs> so um, thanks for your patience again, guys. I was just like, you know, I'm trying. I'm trying. We're in the middle of October. It's still really hot here in California, so it doesn't even feel like fall, but it's coming. And thank you guys so much for watching. I've been getting some really very sweet emails coming through, watching the vlogs and everything. I so appreciate that. Um, and I'm sorry if I don't respond immediately. Uh, October and November are becoming busy, which is, a, I'm so thankful for that, you know. Um, the wedding industry got hit pretty hard this year, so I'm very grateful to have anything <laughs> anything so thank you so much for watching um in the next video i thought i will show you guys i'll give you a little preview we have the roaster set up in the garage now with full ventilation built-in ventilation i've been dreaming about this for ages like one year <laughs> which seems like a really long time but we got that guy vented out through the wall. I don't have to be outside as exposed to the elements, exposed to neighbors. Um, I'm really grateful for that. There are some hiccups though, which I will talk about in the next video, but so far, so good. I just roasted a Vietnam and a Brazil. I'm gonna be doing some experiments with uh, blends again. Um, and yeah, so good things woo feels good to not be in pain and to come back and do another vlog for you guys it feels very good i feel every time i get in front of the camera um i get a little rush of energy back into my fatigued self not having any coffee for damn near a week it's probably been a week by now right all right all right cool thanks guys see you next time bye